everyone. Welcome to Telegraph Beauty School in association with Latest and Beauty. I'm Sonia Harrier, the Beauty Director of the Telegraph. And in our first session today for the Telegraph Beauty School, we'll, we'll be spending the next 45 minutes speaking to the incredible aesthetician, um, Deja Ayodele, who is, um, has over 10 years experience as a fellow British Beauty Council advisory board member and is uh, you know, what she doesn't know about skincare isn't worth knowing. So this is how to master your skincare routine with Deja. Hi, Deja. Hello. Hi, Sonia. How are you? I'm really well, thank you. How are you? I'm really good. Really good. Thank you for really joining good. us today for Telegraph Beauty School on, a, on this really <laughs> Now, honestly, we have had so many questions for you. It's it's funny, isn't it? Because I feel like everyone's obsession with skincare has just gone whoosh, like in lockdown. Suddenly, you know, it's all about the skin. It's all about how to layer your skincare, treating your skincare. Um, and so what would be great, actually, is kind of just to start with you on the building blocks. You know, what are the basics? What do we need to have in our bathroom cabinet? I mean, I think you're, you're great at this because I love... The fact that you don't um you know you don't go overboard with a 12-step mm -hmm. skincare routine which you know can be quite difficult to get your head around so you know what are the basics really that we need to um that we need to be mastering for our skincare routine okay yes um i completely hear you um that over lockdown we've all kind of got very interested in our skin um and i always say there's two camps of people there's people who got uh really interested and sort of just bought lots and lots of skincare and now they're not quite sure what they're doing and then there's the people who are very cautious and just sort of coming into it now the sort of lockdown latecomers as i call them into skincare um but no you're absolutely right i am not the biggest advocate of lots and lots of products and lots and lots of steps i think most people don't have that time and it's easily confusing i think skincare can be a minefield anyway so you kind of need to keep it as simple as possible so i guess when we look at the basic building blocks i'm looking at what what do we need in our skincare routine um, for for healthy skin so i'm looking at um, a decent amount of exfoliators um, i'm looking at some vitamin a so your retinoid or your retinals i'm looking at your sunscreen which is very important for all skin tones um and i'm looking at um moisturizers that reinforce the skin barrier so so things that help to keep um, if you think of your skin as an umbrella things that help to make sure your umbrella doesn't have holes in them so um ingredients say for example like uh, ceramides like urea like glycerin all those things help to keep that umbrella nice and even and and help make sure that water bounces off it rather than sinks you basically so those are sort of, those are the basic building blocks and what we what i like to do is i like to then devise a routine around that so depending on your skin type whether you 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 might be a combination skin type you might be an oilier skin type or you know a, a dry skin type i will then um build a routine around that for you mainly sort of tops six products across your entire day that have all your key actives that you need um and really helps to build your skin up um without um making you sort of do hard labor in the bathroom that's what we all want, isn't it? You want maximum yeah. results without too much effort. Is it like that? It's exactly. the holy grail of skincare, isn't it? So yeah, and it's hard to achieve. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's great to know. So if you want, so essentially, after cleansing, um, mm -hmm. are serums serums the next step? Is that kind of where the magic happens for you? Do you feel? Um, the magic happens in two places. So it's essentially magic happens after cleansing, yes, um, with your serums. Um, so in the morning, it would be a, treat, a treatment serum for a particular concern. It might be that your concern is hyperpigmentation. It might be that your concern is excessively dry skin. It might be that um, your concern might be fine lines and wrinkles, perhaps. So magic happens then. Um, because your serum is where I always say spend your spend spend them as most as you can because that's what's going to get you um, the performance that you need. Especially, and I always say that the spend on your serums can sometimes be um, 
in alignment with what your concern, especially perhaps if you're um, acneic, your your spend on your serum might be a bit higher than someone who isn't acneic. Also, is it can be in line with your age as well. So obviously, as we mature, um, we approach perimenopause, the menopausal um, stage, our, our skin tends to suffer a little bit more. It, it's a, uh, the effects are a little more hard hitting and visible on the skin. So that would be your morning in terms of your magic will happen at your cleansing stage. And in the evening, your magic will happen again. Um, sorry, your magic will happen after your cleanse, just after your cleansing. And in the evening, your magic will happen just after cleansing again, because typically that's when I'll say, go for your vitamin A, your retinoid type product, because your your retinoid is is the is the product that your skin really responds to very, very well. Um, it will do plumping of the skin, it will do stimulating of collagen and elastin, it will do stimulation of hyaluronic acid to help boost that moisture within your skin, it will exfoliate, it will fade dark marks, so it will do quite a lot, so the magic happens there again, um, but but each step really is, is quite important, so for example, if you're not cleansing properly, but yet you're using a vitamin A or you're using the most amazing serum that ever graced the earth, if you're not cleansing properly, then those two products aren't going to do anything for you anyway um so so again um magic happens at every step um but the products that you leave on the skin that have the chance of, of affecting the skin better would be your serums and your vitamin a amazing so vitamin a uh, aka retinol um it's quite a um it's quite a buzzword in skincare isn't it because i feel like yeah. actually in the last i've noticed in terms of um you know, the editorial we create and um, when new products launch. The last five years has seen an explosion in the amount of vitamin A and retinol products. Um, is, it, is it something that's suitable for everyone, do you think? Yes, I think there is a vitamin A out there for everyone because, um, and that's why you notice that I always say vitamin A. I don't say yeah. retinol because retinol is a type of vitamin A, and there are many types of vitamin A's. So you can have um, you can have what we call the esters, which are derivatives. So they're much weaker in concentration. So, for example, if someone had really sensitive skin and we wanted to build their tolerance for vitamin A, we may start off with esters. Um, then you have retinol. Um, and then you can have retinaldehyde and then you can have alpha ret so i always say vitamin a is like the surname of the family or retinoid itself it's the surname and there's lots of different family members brothers and sisters all in this mix and it's about choosing the right one and also there's different ways to use it you don't need to use a vitamin a every single day um the choice is there like for example i use a vitamin a every single day the choice is there but generally so long as it's in your routine somewhere and we can we you, we don't also need to start you off using vitamin a every single night either we can start off twice a week well, we can even start off once a week we just over time build up your tolerance to using it whether it ends up being every day or not it's, it's neither here nor there it's about the use of it and the consistent regular use of it rather than the fact you're using it every day so it is a bit of a buzzword it does tend to scare or make people are apprehensive because they're not quite sure because you can also get it on prescription which is much stronger so if people have heard of things like racutane for example those are prescription vitamin a's and those i always say if you haven't got the concern of say acne yeah. um that or cystic acne then you don't need to be on a prescription vitamin a which you'd get from your gp or your dermatologist you can use over the counter vitamin a's now are amazing now i did bring some yeah. um some of my own stash, um, from my bathroom so I've, I've got a couple of different vitamin a's um that i i bought uh from my stash so so you know, I said to you that there's lots of different types of vitamin A. So, for example, this here, Clarify, um, from a brand called Osmosis, this is a retinaldehyde vitamin A. Um, so the, the difference between this and, say, for example, um, Alpharet, for example, um, is that uh, this has a shorter conversion process to be effective on the skin. So vitamin A will go through different steps before it can be effective on the skin. So this has a shorter step life. Um, an alpha ret, for example, has an uh, an extra um, exfoliant in it. So it has a glycolic acid and a lactic acid attached to the vitamin A. So it's really great for people who really want to cut down their skin uh, skincare routine because it means you've got your exfoliation and you've got your vitamin A. Yeah. 
all at the same time. Um, but the, again, the, 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 it's designed not to be irritable to the skin because that's another reason why people get uh, apprehensive about vitamin A. It can be an irritant yeah. to the skin if you, if you use it incorrectly. So a lot of brands will try and, 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 and put, uh, put other ingredients in the product that will help to dampen down that irritation. So these are two standard vitamin A's that, that I use and I tend to recommend a lot as well. So vitamin A essentially is the corrector. Uh, you know, so it, it, will, it will help with, um, you know, if you've got acneic skin, but also, um, you know, for, for fine lines, wrinkles. Can it also help with pigmentation? Because I feel like that's a query that we get asked so much. And actually mm -hmm. quite a lot of the questions that we have pre-submitted for the session were around pigmentation. Um, what would be your normal protocol if you were seeing a client for pigmentation? So yes, I'm not surprised you got a lot of questions about pigmentation because it's one of the biggest things. Um, we, we get it with we get we get it with Caucasian clients and we get it with darker skin tone clients as well. So my, my black clients will always pigmentation is a big deal. Um, my regular protocol number one is to look at, I look across your skin routine. I find most people aren't using any dedicated products within their skin routine for pigmentation. So. Vitamin A is great. It does work for pigmentation, it, but it's a bit of a jack of all trades. So, you know, sometimes jack of all trades, slightly master of none. So it's a nice treatment to use at night. Um, I find vitamin A, but when it comes to treating pigmentation concerns, I like to have something dedicated to pigmentation in your routine in the form of a serum, um, especially during the day. So what I find is two things. Some people, most people aren't using anything at all because they're not aware of what sort of ingredients they should be looking for for pigmentation. Um, and some people are, say for example, using a vitamin C, which um, they assume is going to also help with their, or, or, or clear up their pigmentation concerns, which um, vitamin C technically isn't because it's an antioxidant more so than a pigmentation product. It will help to brighten the skin, but it's not going to actively fade pigmentation. So I always say to people, pigmentation, you need to look, look, be looking for a serum that contains uh, say something like alpha arbutin, um, kojic acid, uh, licorice extract. Yes, a vitamin C as well. Um, niacinamide, for example, is another one. So those are sort of the key ingredients that you should be looking for in your serum. Personally, um, for me, I prefer for the key ingredients to be in a bit of a cocktail. So I'm not the biggest fan of single product or single ingredient products because then I find that you're layering a lot. You're, you're not sure which order it should all go in. Um, and, and we're not really seeing really good results. So when it comes to pigmentation from, from uh, sort of my stash, um, I, I like this one called um, Even Tone Correcting Theorem which is an alpha arbutin, um, straight, and there's another ingredient called he hexyl resorcinol, which you're not gonna find in a lot of products, but it's another really good one for pigmentation to help fade, because what you want to do, and I don't want to speak science tonight, but what you want to do with pigmentation, you want to effect the process of the skin producing melanin, you want to effect it at different points. You want to start before it even produces melanin. You want to start, you want to uh, interfere with the process while the melanin is being produced to reduce and inhibit that production. And you also then want to fade. So when you have a cocktail of ingredients, you get all of that. If you use a single one ingredient, you don't. You might only be affecting one part of the process. So therefore, you're not getting good results on the surface of your skin. That's so true. I mean, vitamin, um, vitamin C has been another buzzword over the last couple of years. And Particularly in the last year, I'd say the amount of new product launches, you know, from low end budget to high end, you know, designer skincare, it's all about mm -hmm. vitamin C. Um, and I think this whole kind of single, like you say, the kind of single ingredient products can be a bit troublesome, can't they? Because, you know, you've got all of these beauty buzzwords like niacinamide and vitamin A, vitamin C and you know, um, the coochie oil, like, ha is it better in your opinion, just to get one serum that kind of does everything, rather than making everything too complicated? Yeah, absolutely. I love the fact that I always call it like beauty democracy, we, 
over the last five years or so, we've had so many more uh, sort of transparency with ingredients and, and people are able to learn a little bit more about what ingredients do. But what we have then had is the sort of the sale of single ingredient products, which most people, you know, you're not cosmetic scientists, you're not going to know how to do what. And, and most of these products, they're, they're sold very generically because they need to take into account that anybody could be using them so they can't make them too so highly specialized so for, for me i i see really good results from using a a much sort of uh highly formulated product that said i also think it depends where you are in life if you're just starting out in skincare and sort of learning the basics or say maybe early 20s or something then fair enough you could sort of step up step up step up um and take your time but if you are say you walk into my clinic and you're already say 35 two children and so i know that you're stressed for example i know you i know what your lifestyle is like then i'm not going to advocate for the single product single yeah. ingredient products i'm straight to um cocktails that have really good delivery systems because that's the other thing how is the product being delivered to the skin do you want for example say this a product that um spins open so you know that the product is secure opaque packaging and pumps onto the skin or another product that i quite like is or do you want a say uh, uh, uh something with a pipette like an oil with a pipette you know, I always look at the client's age, I look at their lifestyle, and that helps me to select where I think product-wise, um, where they should be going. So not it's not all the time I'm sort of going sort of, you know, clinical high-end product. It's, it's just, if you're, say, menopausal, then I know that your skin needs a lot of support because the effects of the drop of estrogen can be quite pronounced. So again, I tend to go straight in at the sort of more technical high high-end products to give the results that you're after. So it just sort of, we have to play it by ear a little bit. Not not everything is for everyone. Absolutely, that's such good advice. Um, another kind of uh, query that cropped up a lot from our pre-submitted questions was exactly that about dry skin and thirsty skin. And, you know, um, how to kind of almost make this, uh, protect the skin and, and help to kind of layer that moisture back into the skin. Um, what would be your advice if you're, you know, for slightly more of our um, more mature um, viewers, or perhaps if you are suffering that drop in estrogen due to menopause, um, mm. what ingredients or goodness can you put back into the skin to help kind of, um, you know, make it feel okay. good? Okay. One of the first things I'll try and look at is things is I, I generally would have a, a good look at what you, you are actually using. Because sometimes people are using things that are actually stripping their skin and not and not helping at all. Also, I try to make a distinction. Are you really dry or are you dehydrated? Yeah. If you are really dry, it means that your skin isn't producing its enough or any of its own natural oils coming okay. through the surface of the skin. If you are dehydrated, you tend to just feel the tightness uh, every so often, sort of top layers of the skin. So we will do diagnostics and we will see. But generally, we're going for humectants. We, we, we're trying to get a lot of moisture into your skin. So um, and sometimes you'll find people go straight to an oil yeah. and, and what you're doing, is you're, you're sealing dryness into the skin when you do that. You're not, you're not actually uh, hydrating the skin at all. So if you are really dry, we will be going for a humectant based product. So something with a hyaluronic acid because hyaluronic acid will hold, you know, 10,000 times, 1,000 times its weight in, 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 in water on your skin. So that will help to moisturize the skin and keep the skin hydrated. I'll be looking for ingredients that mimic the natural makeup of the skin as well. So I'll be looking for things like ceramides, which is where the brand say, for example, CeraVe comes very handy because they're full of ceramides. I'll be and looking for something therapy. like that. That's great. Yes. Yeah. Yes, very good for the skin. I'll be looking for ingredients that we don't tend to talk about, like glycerin, also very good for the skin to help keep the skin moisturized. I'll be looking for urea, for example. I'll also be looking at how you are using these products on your skin, because say, for example, hyaluronic acid has to go on while the skin is still damp. 
and then you layer something else on top of that and it helps to seal that moisture in. I may be looking for um, ingredients called polyhydroxy acids. So you might, you, it's starting to filter out so much more. So an ingredient called gluconolactone, which is start, you start if you look behind your product sometimes, uh, you start to see it a lot more. It used to be, um, it, it used to sort of have a, a trademark on it, so you couldn't, it wasn't easily available. But it's really good for, it's really good for drawing moisture from the environment to the skin. Because whilst it helps to exfoliate the skin, because it's, it's an acid-based product, um, it, it has a lot of water in it, so it helps to keep the skin moisturized. Um, and if this, you know, if winter's day is cold, I may then add a little bit of a face oil on top, just, just a couple of drops. I may press it into the areas that I find that are most drying. So usually for most people, it's the top of the cheeks. It might be the forehead, but the cheeks are where it gets dry and people really feel that tightness. So I might just put some face oil on that. But we're really looking at mainly hyaluronic acid, the glycerins, the urea, the ceramides, the cholesterols. That's what we're looking at to keep that moisture in. So, um Okay, so in, in sort of summary for a basic, um, you know, day-to-day -day routine, we'll get, we'll get on to um, peels and masks and kind of treatments and that sort of thing in a minute. But um, so essentially you want to be looking at a really good cleanser in the morning, um, yeah. a, some sort of treatment serum, so depending on whatever your, treat your concerns are, whether it be pigmentation, fine lines, wrinkles, um, acne, and then some kind of sealant. So, you know, a, a good hydrator and a good moisturizer. Essentially, yeah. that's kind of three products plus an SPF. And we'll get onto SPF as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that's essentially kind of a four step simple routine. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like that's, you know, that's great for the morning? And in the evening, again, it's just a cleanse plus a, a vitamin A slash treatment product. I mean, that's pretty, pretty much, fixed, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. So the one product you haven't, we, I, I, I don't include as a matter of course, is an antioxidant. And I also yeah. think it depends on age. Um, so I won't necessarily include a standard separate antioxidant into everyone's routine. There's key questions I tend to ask, where do you live? Do you live in a busy city? If you do, then yes, I'm going to put antioxidant in because you're going to be exposed to a lot of pollution. If if are you uh, an outdoorsy person, so you a lot of hiking, a lot of walking and stuff, then you again you're exposed to a lot of um, uh, UV damage and, and environmental damage as well. So I'll, I'll put it in. Have you um, had an upheaval in your life? Maybe you've had children, you've just had a baby, skin's more tired, it's lackluster. You're going to be suffering from um, a, a free radical damage, which basically impacts the skin cells and they don't behave very well so i tend to look at where you are in life the stages you are in life. have you been recently ill because again your skin won't be function up um at its optimum because that's what antioxidants do they help your skin function at its optimum so i i don't include it as a matter of course for everyone because i think it really just depends on what's going on so generally most people walk away with four products, including their sunscreen, and five, including their nighttime, you know, vitamin vitamin A. So that's that's how I tend to look at it. You know, it's it's very straightforward. I don't think it needs to be more complicated than that. There's many things in skincare that are very nice to have. Are they absolutely necessary for you to have healthy skin? No, but they're nice to have. Yeah, I love that. I mean, I love the fact that it it doesn't have to be an extensive routine to get really good healthy skin. Um, but also kind of treat concerns because I think that's something that, um, you know, you essentially still want to get good value and good bang for your buck when it comes to your skincare and kind of see a difference. Of course. Um, moving on to actually, do you know what, what I will cover and um, I've just noticed in the, in the chat box, we've, we're getting lots of kind of questions about certain products. We will send mm -hmm. a full list tomorrow to everyone. Um, with all of the details so you kind of don't feel like you need to like be scribbling loads i know we've we're, we've got a 45 minute session to cover off lots here um but um when it comes to cleansing now the importance of cleansing we've had a couple of questions about cleansing in the chat box um how important is it to everything i know you sort of said beforehand about you know the fact that your products won't penetrate as well um mm -hmm. And I, I know that it's quite often recommended to use a balm, kind of thicker cleanser at night time. Should you have a separate cleanser for the morning and evening, do you think? Oh, cleansing. One of my oh. favorite topics. 
it's the most products I've got sat on my table right now. So cleansing, I let's start with nighttime. It's a bit back to front, but let's start with nighttime. So um, you can, yes, absolutely double cleanse because um, even if you're not wearing makeup, and I know loads of people aren't wearing makeup at the moment because everyone's sort of zooming from home and all that sort of stuff, and that's fine. You are still wearing sunscreen, I hope, because sunscreen, the sun rays do come through the glass, so we still do have to wear sunscreen. Um, so you and sunscreen is designed, you know, it's designed to stick, right? So you're gonna have to take it off. So always a balm cleanser or an oil cleanser. I start with uh, my personal routine. I start with a DHC deep cleansing oil, right? This is what when I finish here today, mm -hmm. I'll go and wash my face with this, um, and I start with that. It emulsifies. I rub it all in. It works on the basis that a lot of makeup is made from fats and waxes, so it's all oil basically. Oil breaks up oil, yeah. so I'll use that. And then depending on my skin concern um, or how I feel my skin looks, and I think it's important people understand their own skin and read their own skin, but depending on how it looks, I might choose any number of cleansers I have. Now, I know I work in this industry, so not everyone's going to have six cleansers in their bathroom. I get that. But I would tend to go for, if I'm going for a middle of the road cleanser, I'll go for something like this oxygen infusion wash. This is... Um, a glycolic acid, lactic acid, and a salicylic acid. So really good for combination oily skin types that just do gonna do a little bit of exfoliation. The lactic will hydrate, the salicylic will decongest the pores. So that's a basic middle of the road cleanser. Sorry, would now, that, um, would you use that after the, D, D, the DHT yeah. ones, right? So you're kind of getting rid of the makeup first and then doing a second cleanse after. And then cleaning my skin after. Got it. If, for example, um, so some people tend to get a bit oilier just before their period. So for that reason, I may go for something like this, which is just a simple, straightforward salicylic acid cleanser because I want to decongest the skin as much as possible. It is good to have, if you can, a separate cleanser for the morning because your, your needs are slightly different. You're not cleaning off sunscreen. You're not cleaning off the residue from a makeup removing oil or balm. So if you can, that's great. That's where I pick places like um, products like the CeraVe. Say this is the hydrating. I that one. Foam. This is really good. And if you've got youngsters in the house as well, it's really good for them too. It's great. And um, it's under 10 pounds, which is just. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's really good for the morning because all you're doing in the morning is you're refreshing the skin from overnight because when you're sleeping, I hear sometimes people say to me, oh, in the morning I just splash. But I'm thinking your skin is getting rid of um, old skin cells all the time, oil, uh, uh, sweat, even overnight. So you do need to do a little bit more than splash. So that's where something like that will come in for me. But the cleansing is it's the cornerstone. And the other thing I also advise people to do is don't just put your cleanser on and then rinse. You need to give it some welly, really, really yeah. work it in. Um, always minimum a minute, minimum a minute, really in the sort of the nose area, this sort of um, what we call the uh, the folds of the face here, where you tend to get oilier, the pores, really give it some good time on your skin. A lot of people just put it on and then off. And that's not as effective as it could be if you really gave it some effort. So yes, cleansing, Absolutely, it. Yeah, you know, I could talk. I'm not going to labour the point, but yes, cleansing. Yes. <laughs> well, if you had slightly drier skin or menopausal skin, would you switch to something? Could you switch to something richer? In yes, absolutely. So that you could switch to something more, uh, um, uh, um, something more hydrating, um, something more nourishing. So, for example, um, the CeraVe again is a good option. Um, the, the CeraVe has a whole range of cleansers. A good option, good price point, really good. Um, if you want to go for something a little bit more, something like this, Benefit Clean, again, very nourishing. It's got uh, grapefruit oil in it, so it gives a bit of radiance to the skin as well. So, when it comes to cleansers, they're there are so many to choose from and it's important you do get one for your concern. I always say if you can stretch to it, definitely get two um, because get one that's a little bit more exfoliating than another because your skin temperament will change during the month month on month it will change um so therefore you kind of need to accommodate that because that's why sometimes you might say oh, i feel a bit dry this week and it could be that you're stripping the skin too much when your skin needs a bit more nourishment at that particular week so if you can get to then absolutely yeah perfect so um amazing i love the i love the focus on cleansing because um <laughs> I feel like 
that's that's it's such an underrated part of the skincare routine, isn't it? Because essentially, if you cleanse properly, everything else is going to work better. So you're you know, quicker, absolutely. Yeah, um, absolutely. I can't emphasize that enough. And another thing that's been really um, uh, sort of buzzy over the last year or two is um, acids. So, oh yeah, it's almost like you know your traditional toner would be something else you'd use in your skincare routine. We all remember the Clinique three step, you know, cleanse, mm -hmm. moisturize, genius. Um, but you know, these kind of liquid toners have come a long way in terms of um, what they can do for the skin. The only thing is, obviously, with acids, you probably need to be a little bit more cautious as to kind of how you're using them, when you're using them, and that sort of thing. So if you're if you're kind of new to exfoliating the skin and you still want that kind of glow that you get with um, with kind of a really good exfoliating product, what's your advice? Okay. I, I, I don't do uh, uh, separate acids um, at all. Right. So I... I, I I do them in your product. So in so because it's another it's just having an extra product to hand. But I will do like a cleanser that's got your acids in them because I think that's a, a much gentler way, especially if you are new to acids. I think that's a much gentler way to go in. Um there's a lot of fear over things like you know, glycolic acid, mandelic acid. Glycolic acid tends to have the, the bad rep. Um and and where for me personally, it, it's my, like my most favorite acid, but I tend to put it into the product, um, like your cleanser or or maybe um, a, a cream, a moisturizer, for example. I don't tend to go for a separate um, sort of acid that gives a bit of a glow because in my experience, I find that those get overused and really ablate the skin barrier. Yeah. Um, and that's not what we want because when, when that happens, you... It, it, you then get the whole, oh, no, acids aren't great for you because you've had a poor experience with them. So I tend not to go for them separately. If you did want to go for them separately, um, the, the sort of ones I'd go for is something like the Ren. Um, Ren do is it the Glow Tonic. Pixie Glow also do the Glow Tonic. Yeah. Um, and they're all very, very gentle. That's where I'd go. If you needed something much, much harder heat hitting, the um, Biologic, uh, Biologic Research P50, yeah. it's also very good. But I'd be very careful how I'm using it. Um, Dr. Dennis Gross has got the Alpha Beta pads, yeah. which are also um, fantastic. But again, it's about being more, I'd go for those if I was more, much more of a veteran. But if you're um, new to acids, I'd go in with a, maybe an acid-based cleanser mm -hmm. rather than a separate standalone acid product. Really good advice. I mean, um, I've been following in the chat, um, lots of people are talking about how, you know, they use a, a flannel in the morning um, or the evening to take off their cleanser, which is exactly what I do. And I feel like actually that is quite a good, um a good kind of natural exfoliation it doesn't it it does it does and also if you're using a vitamin a you're getting bags of exfoliation there anyway oh. the main function of a vitamin a one of its key functions is to speed up the cell turnover process um so if you are using a vitamin a you don't you you so don't need a separate acid i get a lot of clients that have their consultation with me i'll send them back their notes and they'll come back did you didn't recommend an acid or did you forget I'm like, no i didn't forget i just don't yeah. because you, you have it you you have the power of what an acid does in other products so you don't need to have a standalone one sometimes i mean if we talk about traditional toners sometimes people like like to use a, 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 a sort of a hydrating or rehydrating one um which is which is nice to use as well again as like i say nice to have if you i find if you work through your routine fast enough uh, you don't need to then rehydrate the skin before you go on to your next product um there's no need to sort of sit there and wait for one 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 step to dry and then move to the other and then move to, just just keep on going you find that you don't need separate hydrators for your skin that's so interesting. I love the fact that you're kind of, you know, essentially, if you've got the vitamin A, um, you don't need to. I mean, acids have become so trendy, but essentially, um, I know it's quite, again, quite a scary, uh, uh, you know, it's quite an intimidating topic to think kind of, how do I start? There's so many different, you know, glycolics, mandelics, lactic acid. Yeah. But um, yeah. essentially, 
I love the, the advice that, you know, if you've got a really good, expo you know, a vitamin A is an exfoliator. So, you know, yeah. if you've got that in your product, you kind of just don't need an extra. Uh, yeah, extra. exactly. I think, for example, you were using a vitamin A like Alpharet, which is a, a, a glycolic acid, lactic acid combination with the vitamin A. Yeah. The idea of using a separate acid-based product is going to be an overkill. Yeah. Okay, I love that. Right, so we are on uh, cleanser in the morning, treatment serum, moisturizer, and an SPF. Mm -hmm. In the evening, a cleanse and a vitamin A. And that's pretty much will work for the majority, good of yeah. and majority of ages as well. Um, I mean, yes. suppose a vitamin A is probably more geared towards someone, you know, in their sort of 40s plus, would you say? Um, anybody over really the age of 25, you start losing collagen in the skin from age 25 onwards. So anyone over the age of 25, uh, you can, can start including a vitamin A. You, like I say, you don't need to use it every day. You can use it a couple of times a week, three or four times a week if you like. But yes, the sort of older you get, the more you want to be thinking about making sure that vitamin A is a very consistent product in your life. And um, before we kind of go um, to some questions, um, we had we had lots of pre-submitted questions about acne and rosacea. Mm -hmm. So, what would be your um, if someone was suffering from acne and rosacea? And I know it's such a scale because it kind of depends on how your skin is. Um, what would be your normal kind of advice for someone at home? So if you are suffering, I'll, I'll go with acne first. I want to be, I, w I want to see that we're having things like salicylic acid in your routine, for example, because that will help to decongest the pores. I want to see a really good, strong routine around using a little bit of exfoliants. Um, so whether it be a, a mandelic acid, which is also great for oily skin, so maybe that's in your cleanser. I want to see a vitamin A product in there because that will help to um, speed up that exfoliation of the skin and decongest the pores and declog the pores. So that that would be something i'm looking for um the, again acne is on a on a spectrum so we can be talking about whiteheads blackheads we can talk talking about cystic acne if you're cystic um i'll definitely be advising you to also seek the, the services of a dermatologist at least because it may be that you need you you may need uh, a full-on medication maybe a course of rack chain for example um and other sort of uh, uh, hormone dampers to dampeners, I should say rather, to help control the process of, of the sebaceous glands producing oil on the skin. So depending where you are on that spectrum. And I think as practitioners, it's always important for us to know our limits. You know, if someone walked in with a full face of cystic acne, I would be advising them generally around their skincare, but I would also be strongly suggesting to consult a dermatologist. Same goes for rosacea. Rosacea, we want to look at the triggers. We want to make sure we're using those products that are soothing the skin and building that skin barrier to reduce the sensitivity of the skin. Rosacea, um, I tend to really like the brand Neostrata and their um, Restore range. The Restore range is full of polyhydroxy acids. So that will help to keep the skin comfortable uh, as well as um, dampen down um, the, the triggers of rosacea. So whether it be heat or spicy food, you know, there's so many triggers. But again, depending on the extent of it, we would be also suggesting you need to speak to a dermatologist because there's other treatments you could be having. Um, so it all depends on the scale. But we all would like to go for, say, for example, if you had rosacea, we could go for things like LED light treatments, which are very soothing and help to build up the skin's resistance, uh, resilience and barrier. Likewise, if you had acne, we could go for treatments that, uh, say, um, superficial uh, chemical peels, for example. We could go for vitamin A peels. So you can get a, like a retinal peel done as well. So there's various options. It just depends. It's a very, and this is why I always say when it comes to things like this, seek advice the best thing you can do for yourself is seek advice rather than maybe consult social media or, or Dr. Google or anything like that. Definitely try and seek some advice. Great. Um, I'm just going to go to some questions, um, kind of covering off anything that we haven't. And I know I'm very aware that this has been a very intense 40 minutes in terms of skincare because it's such a huge topic, isn't it? There's almost so much we can cover. And that is exactly why we're doing Telegraph Beauty School. Um, so we've got lots of sessions lined up and, you know, it's an ongoing series. So we're going to have, um, we're going to cover off lots. 
Um, so, Deja, to the questions, we've got lots of um, questions about open pores. And okay. I know, um, you know, are there any kind of key ingredients you should be looking out for if you feel like pores are quite an issue for you? Yes. Okay. Pores, uh, salicylic acid. We want the, the thing, the, the two things, main things where you get visible pores on the skin. The pores, I always call them, they're a bit like balloons. They fill up with oil. And when you suck the oil out, they shrink and therefore less visible on the skin. So you want to be using a, a good cleanser that washes away excess oil from the skin. So salicylic acid. You may, if you uh, really suffer from oily skin, want to include something like um, a Paula's Choice uh, salicylic acid 2%, which is called a BHA 2%. You may want to include that if you're particularly oily. That will help to decongest those pores and make them less visible on the skin. Also, you want to be using a vitamin A because that will stimulate your collagen. When, as we age, um, we lose collagen, and those are the structures that hold the pores up. So if we're losing collagen and structures going, the pores start to stretch, and when they start to stretch, they also tend to get more visible on the surface of the skin. So you want to be using something that's stimulating that vitamin A to keep it in place for as long as possible. So those are the two, sort of my two go-tos, um, a salicylic acid and uh, a vitamin A. If you are maybe breaking out as well, in addition to the pores, you might want to consider something that has a, like a benzoyl peroxide because that will also help um, with antibacterial effects on the skin. Great. Um, SPF, um, mm -hmm. when would you use it in your routine and um, why is it so important? Okay, so you would use SPF last thing, the so last thing you do. So no if you, if you could do if you're going to uh off your skincare before makeup right so if you're wearing makeup you stop at spf um if you are wearing makeup then obviously you do your spf and then you do your makeup why is it important there's several reasons why it's important we've got cosmetic reasons why it's important we've got health reasons why it's important and it, and it varies depending on what skin color you are so from a cosmetic point of view it helps to prevent fine lines and wrinkles um the sun uva rays will age the skin and they do that by breaking collagen that's why you get fine lines and wrinkles and the skin goes leathery and tough so you want to use a sunscreen to help that to, to, to protect the collagen from being broken down also sunscreen will worsen your hyperpigmentation if you've got any type of hyperpigmentation the sun will worsen it sun rays will worsen it so that's from a uva point of view from a uvb point of view always remember b for burning the sun will burn the skin as well so if you're white you'll find you get your easy burnt by the sun if you're black you can still get burnt by the sun but probably not as in, in the same speed as somebody who's white would get burnt by the sun likewise um from a from, on a black skin uh hyperpigmentation will get worse from uva rays so from a cosmetic point of view you also want to be wearing sunscreen one of the key things about sunscreen especially if i if i just touch on this for a little bit on, for the darker skin tones is that when you are white you you will use sunscreen and you'll do that monthly check you know we do the abcd check and we always advise everyone do the abcd check check your moles they change size they change color and all that kind of stuff um you're used to that but if you are a darker skin tone you're not used to doing that and one of the good, good things about getting the habit of wearing sunscreen is that it helps you get used to that so you can spot when there's any changes in your skin that might be sinister um so that's a good one of the sort of basic good reasons for wearing sunscreen but it's, it's absolutely for everybody amazing um, it's so important, isn't it? I mean, it's essentially. Oh, do you have any favourite SPFs? I know. Uh, I'd love to jump in. With my uh, favorite. I do. I do. I, so, uh, if um, this is, I've, I've got one called Exuvians, which is a share refining fluid SPF forty, which is very important because on uh, on darker skin tones, you don't want that cast, that sort of white cast being left from the sunscreen. So this doesn't leave anything at all. Um, and also another one of my favorites is the Estee Lauder Perfectionist Pro. This is, it's, it's just, this is just lush skin. It just, especially if you're not wearing any makeup, this is absolute lush skin. So um, this is a good one too. So these are um, by all means, not my only stash of sunscreens, but these are sort of regular ones that I use. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, my favorite is the, um, I love the La Roche-Posay and Thalios. The Shaka fluid, amazing. Amazing. And it's so fine. Yeah. You kind of feel like it sits quite nicely under makeup as well. Um, Absolutely. Amazing. Thank you so much, DJ. We've we've spoken for uh, for quite a while on on skincare, and thank you all so so much for um, for joining us. And I really hope you enjoy. I mean, this is our first first kickoff session for Telegraph Beauty School, but there's lots more to come. Um, thank you so much, DJ. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you.